Howdy folks, we are talking about the middle of World War I, the battles in the course of war in the middle section of the war. So let's begin. Your goal for the screencast is when you're done you should be able to explain multiple reasons why the battles of Somme and Verdun are kind of stereotypical World War I battles. As usual, you can take notes in any manner that works for you. So without further ado, let's do this. World War I starts in 1914 as a war of movement. Again, we've been over this before. It started with the Schlieffen Plan, where Germany was going to invade France and defeat France, and then go invade Russia and defeat Russia. And in six weeks, Germany was going to rule all of Europe. This didn't happen. One of the reasons it didn't happen is the Battle of Marne, which stopped the Schlieffen Plan. It stopped the German advance into France and created this line of trenches that ran from the North Sea all the way down to Switzerland and is what kind of World War I is known for, particularly on the western front of World War I. There's also a second battle in 1914 that merits mentioning, and it's the Battle of Tannenberg. Battle of Tannenberg, like I said, also in 1914, it's on the eastern front, and the reason that this is important is not that the Germans defeated Russia, but that they took excuse me, but that they took, the Germans took troops away from France to fight against the Russians. Russia had gotten mobilized way more quickly than Germany expected, so German troops had to get moved to the Western Front, the German-Russian Front, in order to fight against the Russians. Again, this shows that the Schlieffen Plan is not going to work because you're shipping out German troops before Russian troops end up, or excuse me, you're shipping out German troops before the French are defeated by the Germans. Just a quick picture of the Battle of Tannenberg. Um, again, Russia in initially has a victory, but nine days later, um, find the, their second army finds themselves completely surrounded by the Germans, and the Germans pull off the upset. Some pictures from the Battle of Tannenberg. So this trench warfare that I talked about the Battle of Marne creating on the Western Front is a stalemate. This means that nobody's moving forward. The Germans aren't gaining land from the French. The French aren't gaining land from the Germans. It's just a whole bunch of death, pretty much, with nobody gaining or losing any ground. And this is what World War I is most clearly known for, is these horrible trench battles with horrific conditions in the trenches. Um, and it is, it is what, what World War I, like I said, is most known for. And this goes on from 1914 to 1918 on the Western Front. So other key battles you should be aware of, there are two of them. The first one is the Battle of Verdun. Again, these are both, both of the battles that we're going to talk about, Verdun and the Somme, are uh, in France. So they are Western Front battles. This is a almost year-long battle, and it's a German attack. And it started with a nine-hour German artillery attack. And in, that nine, in those nine hours, the Germans shot a million shells at the French positions. So that's more than 100,000 shells an hour, which is more than 20,000 shells, or excuse me, more than 2,000 shells per minute were shot at the French for nine consecutive hours. That's kind of ridiculous. Germans used the attrition strategy where they weren't trying to win any grand victory, but the attrition strategy just says, we, the Germans, are going to try to kill you, the French, a little bit faster than you are killing us. So they're just kind of throwing people to their death with the hope that, you know, the other side is going to lose more people and lose the will to fight more quickly than the Germans. Look, there's what I just said. And in this battle, there are 400,000 combined injured and 300,000 combined deaths. So almost three-quarter of a million casualties in this battle. So here's the Battle of Verdun. You can see that gray thing there. That is the town of Verdun. Um, you can see kind of the, the forts in the area. So some pictures from the Battle of Verdun. This is one of the most startling images of World War I. This is the fort at Verdun before the battle, and the fort at Verdun after the battle. Again, before, after. Holy cow. There are those two pictures right next to each other. That's insane. 
Another key battle was the Battle of the Somme. Uh, this was in 1916. This is a British offensive. There were two reasons for this British offensive. Number one, uh, they wanted to attack to hopefully draw some of the Germans who were attacking the French so viciously at Verdun. This attack was hopeful, hoping to pull some of the German troops away from that battle. It also was this wide, wide attack where by attacking in across such a wide front, the idea was this breakthrough that we talked about in a previous screencast that by attacking in so many places that one of those breakthroughs was bound to happen and that at some point this British attack would pierce the German lines and then once the German trench was pierced then they would be able to, them being the British, would be able to run through German lines and start to push them back towards Germany. The Somme started with a six-day bombardment. So they're shooting 300,000 shells a day for six days. That was ridiculous. But again, with this bombardment, the goal of the bombardment generally is to take out the artillery. The Somme didn't take out the German artillery. You also want to destroy the barbed wire, making it easier to get for your soldiers to get across no man's land. It didn't destroy the barbed wire. This isn't going to go well for the British, in case you couldn't tell. Also, the German trenches weren't greatly affected by the bombardment. People were still in them. Yet another reason this isn't going to go well for the British. The first day of the battle, 20,000 British died. 1.1 million combined injuries in this battle, 300,000 deaths in six months. So there, with all of those red lines that you see, that is this wide front that the British were trying to attack Germany across trying to get that breakthrough. Somme was also the debut of the tank. It was the first time the tank was used in battle. Not super effective early on. Some more images of Battle of Somme. So Somme and Verdun are kind of, the, there are some commonalities. Both the battles lasted for months. There were tons and tons and tons of casualties, and very little land was exchanged. They're kind of stereotypical battles because there's a huge death rate with very little to show for either side for all of what these deaths had done. So in 1917, the Russian Revolution happens, and this is an enormous event. The Russian leader steps down uh, because the Russian troops are getting slaughtered, so the war's not going well, and people are unhappy in Russia because there's no food and there's no fuel. Communists take over and they promise the Russian people peace and land and bread. This means that Russia is not going to continue to fight in World War I, which means that every German troop that is on the Eastern Front fighting against Russia is going to all of a sudden get shipped to the Western Front to fight against the British and to fight against the French. Clearly this is a problem for the Allied powers because now Germany and her allies are going to be able to concentrate only on fighting on one front. We will talk a ton more about the Russian Revolution next year as well. But what you need to know right now is in 1917, Russia leaves, Russia leaves the war and Germany is fighting a one-front war. Also in 1917, the U.S. declares war on Germany. We'll talk more about this later in the unit. And there's more slaughter on the battlefield. The year 1917 is known as the breaking of the armies. So your goal for the screencast is you can explain multiple reasons why the Battle of Somme and Verdun are stereotypical World War I battles. If you can do this, great. If not, go back and reread various sections, or excuse me, go back and rewatch various sections of the screencast. Thanks.